Welcome to Pathology Central Key Concepts. The topic of this video is acute tubular injury. I will begin by defining acute kidney injury and discussing the uh, systemic effects of that entity. I will next analyze the pathophysiology of acute tubular injury and finish up by describing the morphologic findings of that entity. So why this focus on acute kidney injury and acute uh, tubular injury? Well, the reason is that acute tubular injury can lead to acute kidney injury, and acute kidney injury has a significant impact on your patient's morbidity and mortality. So acute kidney injury used to be called acute renal failure, and you may still hear that term on the wards or see that in the older liter literature. And it's characterized by a rapid decrease in glomerular filtration rate, and this is going to lead to dysregulation of the fluid electrolyte balance. Now, you'll be able to monitor this in your patients uh, by lab tests for serum creatinine and blood urea nitrogen, both of which will increase. And in fact, this increase may be the first indication you have that your patient is on the brink of multi-organ failure. Because as you're well aware, the kidneys are incredibly important for homeostasis. And as their function begins to decline, there will be downstream effects such as volume overload and the buildup of toxins that are no longer being filtered out and excreted. So what are the systemic effects of acute kidney injury? So a lot of them are going to be due to what I described, volume, overload, and toxins. So the lungs can be overloaded by volume. There will also be increased vascular permeability and the release of pro-inflammatory cytokines. The buildup of toxins can lead to uremic encephalopathy, and there will also be uh, some permeability of the blood-brain uh, barrier. The heart can be affected by the volume overload, and as the toxins build up, this can cause nausea and vomiting. Now, the volume overload can cause passive vascular congestion of the liver, which can lead to hepatocyte necrosis, release of cytosolic proteins into the blood, consequent elevation of uh, transaminases. And also, as hepatocyte uh, function becomes impaired, you will get cholestasis. And finally, not even the bone marrow is spared. We can get immune dysfunction, anemia, and thrombocytopenia when you have acute kidney injury. So as you can see, this is a very significant issue for patients. So what is acute tubular injury? So as I mentioned, acute tubular injury is one of the principal causes of acute kidney injury. And in fact, in hospitalized patients, about 50% of them that have acute kidney injury, it's due to ATI. ATI is damage to the tubular epithelial cells, and it causes acute decrease in renal function. But if you correct whatever the injury is, it can be reversible. Now, there are three phases of acute tubular injury, the initiation phase, the maintenance phase, and the recovery phase. So the initiation phase is the first 36 hours after that initial insult, whether it be hypovolemia or uh, some sort of toxin. And what will happen is you'll have a very rapid decrease in your GFR, which is going to lead to decreased urine output, increased BUN and creatinine. Now, over the next one to two weeks, uh, and the time period uh, varies depending on what the insult was and how well the patient is responding to treatment, you will get stabilization of the GFR. It's still going to be low, and you'll have low urine output. And because of this, you'll have high BUN creatinine and salt and water overload. Now, this uh, dysregulation can lead to hyperkalemia, which is a risk factor for arrhythmias, as well as you can get metabolic acidosis. So these patients need a lot of monitoring, a lot of care. Now, with progression, you're going to get, as, as you progress towards healing, you're going to get improvement of the GFR. It's going to slowly increase, which will result in a steady increase in urine volume. But because the tubular epithelium is still injured, it's still damaged, it's not just in one to two weeks, it's like, bam, we're back to normal. As the GFR goes up, urine volume isn't going to return to normal, so about 1.2 liters per day. It's going to up, go up to almost like 3 liters per day, which is a lot. And this is going to cause loss of water and uh, electrolytes like potassium and sodium. And so now the patient, in contrast to earlier where they had hyperkalemia, are at risk for uh, hypokalemia. Uh, which is also a risk factor for uh, arrhythmias. And for unknown reasons, patients uh, in this phase uh, have an increased risk of infection. So why is the tubular epithelium so vulnerable, right? Why, why can't it be robust like the squamous epithelium of the esophagus? Why, is it, why does it just, you know, fall apart when it becomes, you know, there's some ischemia or some toxins? You got to remember that the kidney is working hard, right? This is, this is probably, that and the liver are probably your hardest working organs. And the reason is that both of them are really involved in uh, removing toxins. 
So one of the things that uh, tubular epithelial cells is they ha have is they have this increased, in incredibly increased surface area for tubular absorption. All these microvilli, okay, and they are actively transporting ions and organic acids. So if you think about it, they're small organs, but they get a lot of the cardiac output, and they need to use ATP. Uh, for the sodium uh, potassium ATPase. So they're using a lot of energy. So they have a lot of surface area, which is, is giving them exposure to toxins. They're actively working, using a lot of uh, oxygen, high metabolic rate, uh, lots of mitochondria. And what is their job? It's to resorb and concentrate toxins. So if you give them a big bolus of toxins, you got to expect that they're going to be vulnerable to those toxins. So the two principal uh, insults to the tubular epithelium are ischemia and toxins. And ischemia is something that's going to be much, much more common than toxic injury uh, because we see uh, ischemia in so many different uh, conditions. So for hypovolemic shock, or if you have a patient who is uh, septic and has peripheral vasodilation, uh, someone with microangiopathies uh, that affect the kidney, like hemolytic uremic syndrome, thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura, uh, or a vasculitis that affects the kidney. And then there are toxins, so both endogenous and, and exogenous. So endogenous toxins include myoglobin. So if a patient has a massive crush injury, that myoglobin is released into the blood, filtered by the kidney, and can form uh, myoglobin casts in, in the tubules. Uh, hemoglobin, monoclonal light chains due to multiple myeloma, bile, bilirubin, all of these uh, are endogenous toxins. And then our exogenous toxins include a variety of medications, uh, radiocontrast dyes, uh, heavy metals, organic solvents, and this can be um, uh, worsened if the patient is, for example, slightly dehydrated. So I'm going to tell you in words and then we're going to look at a picture, so don't be overwhelmed by this because we're going to go through it in detail. So how are these cells actually injured? So we have the initiating event, ischemia or toxins, which are going to damage the tubular epithelium. This is going to alter our epithelial transport, decreasing our sodium resorption, which is going to increase downstream uh, sodium concentration. This is going to go whoop to the tubo-glomerular feedback. The, the macula densa is going to be sending signals and say, whoa, we're getting a lot of sodium here. We need to have intrarenal vasoconstriction using the renin-angiotensin uh, pathway. This is going to shut down your glomerular blood flow and your glomerular filtration rate. So we're going to get decreased uh, O2 delivery to the tubules, particularly if you think about it, the outer medulla has a lower uh, partial pressure of oxygen than the cortex. And so the tubules that are going to be affected by this are going to be the thick ascending limb and the straight segment of the proximal tubule. So all of this, you have ischemia or toxins, now you're going to be increasing uh, your uh, ischemia by uh, vasoconstricting. So what's another thing that happens when you have cellular injury? As you'll recall from earlier on in Robbins in chapter one, we have injured cells, cytokines, adhesion molecules upregulated, bringing in leukocytes, leukocytes putting out reactive oxygen species, more injury. So it's still not going well for our, our poor tubular epithelial cells. And then the cells that are already injured, they detach. And where do they go? They're lining the uh, inside of a tube, they flow in there, and they can obstruct the lumen. This is going to increase your, in, your intratubular pressure, which is going to cause a decrease in GFR, again leading towards anuria oliguria. Finally, the uh, detached cells, as they, as they detach, now you have um, this damaged area of the epithelium where you can get edema fluid leaking out. This is going to uh, increase your interstitial pressure. Here you have this flexible tube. You've got pressure on the outside. It's going to collapse. This is, again, going to decrease urine output. So you can see how all of these things are going to pile on top of each other and amplify to end up in decreased uh, urine output. So this picture is going to put it all together for you in a really nice way. This comes from Robbins uh, and Kumar, uh, Basic Pathology, 11th edition. Let's start with something simple. We got a little uh, ischemia here. Here we have our afferent uh, arteriole, our efferent arteriole, our beautiful little glomerulus, our proximal convoluted, our distal convoluted, our collecting duct, and then we have uh, our uh, loop of Henle. So with just a little bit of ischemia here, what that's going to do is we're going to slow down and narrow that efferent arteriole. And so that right away is going to, going to cause decreased uh, GFR. 
So what, let's look what happens with both ischemia and toxic injury. So we have our epithelial injury. As I mentioned, now we're not going to be using our uh, sodium potassium ATPase as well. We don't have the ATP. Uh, we're running out of oxygen, so we have decreased sodium resorption. This is going to result in increased sodium coming down along here, coming to our distal uh, convoluted tubule, and here is our tuboglomerular feedback with a macula densa saying, shut that down. Let's uh, have some afferent arteriolar vasoconstriction leading to G decreased uh, GFR, decreased urine output. What else can happen with our ischemic and toxic injury? As these cells are injured and dying, they can detach and be shed into the urine, which you can see here. They form this little uh, clump here, uh, and this is going to cause outflow obstruction. Again, this is going to lead to decreased urine output. Also, as they have this damage here, you can get fluid leaking in the, into the interstitium. As that interstitial pressure goes up, this tube is going to collapse down. This is going to lead to decreased urine uh, output. Now, these cells that detach are going to glom together with uh, TAM horsefall protein, and they're going to form casts. Uh, and so if you look uh, in uh, urine cytology, you can see casts uh, as well as uh, shed uh, tubular epithelial cells. Okay, so let's talk now about our histologic findings. What do we see uh, as pathologists, and what are they telling us, these, these particular findings? So for ischemic uh, uh, ATI, the lesions are primarily going to be in the straight portions of the proximal tubule and the ascending thick limbs. Uh, and this has to do in part with the uh, formation uh, with the um, ox oxygen tension, which as uh, you'll recall is highest in the uh, cortex, lowest in the medulla. So this uh, area here is going to fall into that area where you can, where if you have ischemia, it's going to be accentuated in these areas. Uh, once you get this, you're going to get uh, attenuation of the proximal uh, tubular brush borders, and they can bleb and slough completely slough off, and this is, can cause a simplification of the epithelium, and I'll show you a nice picture in a moment. You get epithelial cell detachment, and then these proteinaceous casts that form in the distal tubules, that's where the pH is lowest, and if you're a protein, that is where you're going to precipitate in the distal tubules and the collecting ducts. You can also see interstitial edema and that mild inflammatory infiltrate. Now, in nephrotoxic uh, ATI, uh, the necrosis tends to be in the proximal tubule, and there'll be various findings depending on what the toxin is. So you might see uh, myoglobin casts, you might see inclusions uh, from lead poisoning, a variety of different things. And as I mentioned, you can see these granular cell casts and tubular cells in the urine. So let's go back and think to uh, the cell injury chapter of Robbins. Uh, I'm showing you this because this is a beautiful example of happy, healthy uh, renal tubular epithelium. And you can see that, you know, we don't need a scanning electron micrograph to see the uh, microvilli. We can see this brush border, this sort of blurriness here on the surface. Now this is uh, showing reversible injury, because this is from the injury chapter, where you can see a little bit of eosinophilia here, uh, and perhaps a little bit of uh, protein uh, leakage. And then as we go on to uh, necrosis, uh, you can see these cells are actually necrotic and are sloughing. Now I just want to pause for a moment and tell you, we used to call this acute tubular necrosis, ATN, and now we call it acute tubular injury. The reason we call it acute tubular injury is we don't really see necrosis all that much. So generally, we don't see all the way to this far when we look histologically. This is what we're going to see is injured cells with some sloughing. So let's take a look here. This is a, a very nice image uh, from a pathologic basis of disease. Here's our glomerulus, here are our tubules, and here is one which is really experiencing acute tubular injury. And we can recognize it easily because notice how flattened the epithelium is. It's very simplified. And then what's filling up the lumen is this gluey pink proteinaceous debris, probably a little bit of TAM horsefall protein, uh, and uh, a few cells as well. You can see that here. And then as you look at these cells here, you can tell they're also not particularly happy. Uh, they're irregular, they're showing some eosinophilia, some of them are detaching. And then if we look on higher magnification here, you can see these cells have died and are, have been shed 
uh, into uh, the tubule. And you can see why this is going to A, glob up that, that uh, tubule and uh, block urinary outflow, but also why as they uh, build up pressure and they are expelled, you get these casts in the urine. All right, I'm going to just finish with a few questions so you can uh, see what you've learned in the last 15 minutes or so. Uh, so go ahead and uh, take a look at that. And as always, thank you very much for your time and attention. Uh, I hope you have found this useful. This is a, an example of uh, native uh, milkweed. Uh, and here is a, a honeybee uh, getting a little bit of pollen and nectar uh, for her hive mates. So thank you very much.